great palm trees stood tall against the sky. Under them in the oasis, smaller plants and shrubs clustered, covering the land with a thin green carpet. Hermes and Malcolm perched together in the shadow of a pile of large rocks. In front of a campfire, they passed warm bottled water back and forth between them. Malcolm wiped off the opening before he took each sip. I have to admit, this is beautiful, he said with a grin. I never knew how pretty Tunisia would be. I'm really in awe. Just think, Hermes said. Back home, they're scraping snow off their cars. And I'm sitting in the middle of the Sahara. Who would have thought it? Malcolm took another drink of water. And disregarding the two different groups of people that are trying to kill me and the bit of international trespassing I'm about to do, it's not that bad. Hermes smiled broadly. Good! I'm glad to see you're finally having fun. Trying to. That's all I ask. Malcolm sighed and collapsed backward onto the sparse grass. Hermes did as well. Above them, the sky opened up its endless expanse, flowing away like a black sea lit by a million tiny lights. It's gorgeous, Malcolm sighed. So amazingly gorgeous. Hermes tried to focus his eyes on one of the stars, but it seemed to liquefy and its light flowed into another beside it. I guess, he answered. Malcolm turned to him. The majestic infinity of the cosmos is right here, and that's all you can say? Hermes bent one arm back behind his head and dropped his other arm beside him, where his hand gently brushed against Malcolm. He could sense the shivers he caused to echo through Malcolm's frame, but did not withdraw his hand. I look up there and I see it, and people say how beautiful it is, and I just look at it. I know it should make me feel some way, it should make me feel special and happy and content, but it just doesn't. It's like some big cosmic joke that no one's let me in on. His nose itched, and he scratched it, replacing his hand and brushing against Malcolm again. For all the beautiful things that pass through my hands, beauty never affects me. I don't know why. He turned his head and gazed at Malcolm. I guess I'm defective. Malcolm had been watching him. Well, you've probably seen so much. It probably takes more to impress you. Maybe that's it. Hermes drew down his eyebrows, trying to rid himself of an uneasy feeling. But it shouldn't be like that. Simple things like laying under a blanket of stars next to a handsome man. Malcolm turned away. That should affect me. That should dazzle and overwhelm me. Malcolm's voice was low. And it doesn't? Hermes shook his head. Like I said, I know it should, but it doesn't. They were silent. You're a lucky man, Hermes finally sighed. Very lucky. Malcolm scoffed. You're right, you are defective. Hermes laughed and looked back at the night sky. Go to sleep. You're under the universe. It's beautiful. At least you know it's beautiful. And I'm lying next to a handsome man. And you're lying next to a handsome man. See how lucky you are? Hermes pulled his other arm up behind his head. Be happy. One day you'll remember this, and I want it to make you smile. Malcolm closed his eyes and yawned. I still hate you for forcing me to come. Good night, Malcolm. In a few minutes, the human was asleep. Hermes fetched a blanket from the packs and laid it across him to guard against the chilly night air. He listened to Malcolm's measured breathing for a bit before his own thoughts and gaze returned to the spreading sky. It seemed as if every shining light he saw could be a life he had lived, a persona he had played, a mortal he had touched. The constellations were a map of his infinite life, crisscrossing the sky as points of intense memory. Names began to rise to the surface of his consciousness, names he could no longer affix in linear time, receding back into his history. Along with names, there were feelings and hazy pictures, 
and half-remembered scenes that would have required many more nights to catalog and file correctly into a sequence of 14 centuries. Like the light of the stars, they flowed and merged into each other, overlapping so that no clear edge could be discerned. His eyes began to ache from the strain and he closed his lids, blocking out the universe. Instantly, the names evaporated, and the feelings and images melted into blissful nothingness. A low noise reached his immortal ears, a short hiss, the flip of a moist tongue between two lips. Turning his head slowly, he saw a snake curled up atop the pile of rocks about six feet from Malcolm's head. Its scales reflected the moonlight like a mosaic of tiny mirrors. As Hermes watched, it raised its diamond-shaped head and flowed down between the rocks like water and began to push its way through the sand, twisting its body around and around. The hairs on the back of Hermes' neck pricked up and were tickled by the night breeze. He watched as the creature slithered toward Malcolm, leaving a trail in the sand. The human's nose twitched in sleep. The snake paused and raised itself up. Its tongue shot out in repetitious motion, tasting the air. It stared at Hermes as if gauging his reaction. Hermes' eyes narrowed as he returned the glare. The snake swayed. The tip of his black tail quivered in anticipation. Its ebony eyes glistened and creases in its brown underbelly folded across one another as it wavered from side to side. Malcolm's chest rose and fell in a soft rhythm of breath savored by the snake's curious tongue. Slowly, Hermes raised himself up on one arm, digging his elbow into the sand. He placed his palm flat and ready to leap across Malcolm if necessary. The snake drew its body back momentarily. It lowered its head, keeping Hermes in its gaze. A branch on the fire spat a white spark into the air with a loud pop. Nothing moved, except for the stomach of the sleeping human. Annoyed, Hermes pursed his lips. Tired of the game, he stood up and walked around Malcolm. The snake, terrified, slithered backwards, waving its body wildly as a threat. Hermes bent down and took hold of the creature with his right hand. It hissed like mad. Sharp fangs punctured the side of his hand as his fingers closed around the soft body. Hermes winced at the moment of pain. The snake wriggled, trying to escape as Hermes drew his arm back. It tried to bite him again, but missed as Hermes flung it as far as he could out into the darkness. He heard it thud somewhere against the sand. Looking down at his hand, he saw the two puncture marks. The skin surrounding them was white, and the holes the fangs had made were streaked with black. As he watched, the black began to rise to the surface and run in tiny droplets down his hand. With every heartbeat, the thick ichor that flowed through his veins pushed the venom out of the wound. Within a minute, the black was gone, and his ichor had filled each slit cell by cell. Hermes returned to Malcolm's side and lay back down, accidentally knocking against him. The human woke with a start. What is it? he asked, looking over at Hermes with startled but drowsy eyes. Nothing, Hermes replied, pulling his arms back beneath his head. You're safe. Go back to sleep. <laughs>